right, let's hit the field. All right. Just wanted to talk, that's all. Saturday, April 13th, game one. The Yankees were taking on the Guardians after a rainout on Friday night. Clark Schmidt was on the mound for game one, hoping to get the Yankees back on the winning track. My recap and your reactions coming up next. This is NYY Recaps. Welcome to Yankee Stadium. New York City. Just when they thought I was out. They pull me back in. <laughs> like we can go with the fun hat. Clay Holmes made it interesting. But we got through it. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to this Saturday afternoon doubleheader game one episode of NYY Recaps. Don't forget to call into the voicemail. We're going to have a voicemail show tomorrow morning. Another recap later tonight. The game, you missed a pretty good one. I'll get to it in a second. But first, I got to say, I'm glad to hear that OJ Simpson can finally rest now that his wife's killer is dead. Oh! It was a windy, windy day in Cleveland today. Uh, Judge had a pop-up in the first inning that I thought was going to be an easy play. Ended up carrying all the way to the right field wall. Got a double out of it. Yanks had a couple of pop-ups today that ended up dropping in. Rizzo had one. Trevino had one. Trevino forgot he was a catcher for a minute. Got thrown out trying to take second base. But uh, Stanton was out of the lineup. You'll probably see him in game two. Judge was the DH. Swung the bat better. I'm wondering if he's going to be in there for game two. I, I think he will. I think he'll probably be in center field. We had Grisham out there in center field today. And he was a double play machine. Uh, Oswaldo Cabrera back in the lineup. He stayed hot. Hit a big two-run home run. You know, it's not hard to get five days off at the major league level. And then come in and have a couple of good at-bats. He had a home run and a walk today and Cabrera right now hitting 333 with an OPS over a thousand not getting much time against left-handed pitchers but doing the job against righties he's already driven in 10 runs so uh, Clark Schmidt I thought threw the ball pretty well today but once again turned into a pumpkin in the sixth inning we'll talk about that and once again just a reminder like and subscribe if you're new we are creeping up towards 40,000 subscribers As we finish off the highlights here, you see the uh, big double play there. Clark Schmidt got a couple of big double plays. Here's the home run from Waldo. 93 above the zone, and he tomahawked it. I believe he hit a home run in in Cleveland in the playoffs a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, Somebody correct me if I'm wrong there. But uh, you see it was a uh, 96-mile-an-hour exit velocity, almost 97, 352 feet, so definitely a home run at Yankee Stadium. Caleb Ferguson did a pretty nice job out of the pen today. Glaber Torres he threw one away. That's how the Guardians got their two runs today. Uh, and then uh, really nice play right here by Rizzo. He's been scuffling a little bit defensively, but made a pretty good play uh, when the Yankees needed, uh, needed him to. So uh, let's get through your key right, takeaways. Let's, let's get it going. Joe Bag says Florial got robbed. We will talk about that. I do agree with you that I think uh, Florial got robbed today. But let's begin with Clark Schmidt. Uh, last year, I remember him getting clobbered by Cleveland. He's come a long way as a pitcher since then. He's pitching a little bit like Blake Snell pitches, honestly. He's not as good as Blake Snell. But he basically says, okay, we'll get some base runners. There'll be walks or whatever. But you're not going to do much damage off of me. Threw a ton of pitches, but... Um, you know, wiggled out of some tough innings. He was throwing the cutter a lot today. I'll get through his pitch breakdown, which I thought was interesting in a little bit. But let's take a look at his stats. You know, he worked into and out of trouble uh, a few times today, first and second innings. Pitch count was elevated, but then he settled into a groove. Struck out the side in the third inning. Curveball was filthy. Got into another jam in the fifth inning but got out of it with a double play. I was surprised they ran him out there for the sixth. He was at 79 pitches, but they weren't stressful pitches, uh, and his command wasn't great. So I felt like, anyway, uh, that six innings was pushing it, uh, but they did send him out there. He ended up giving up a couple of hits, and now after three games started, he's got a 3.55 ERA, 14 and two-thirds innings pitched, 1.66 whip. So, you know, Uh, Can't really complain about uh, what we're seeing so far from Mr. Clark Schmidt. So, five walks today, that's too many. Seven strikeouts, three hits allowed. Again, you'll sign up for it. I'll take that every day of the week. 
from Clark Schmidt. Swing and a miss. You serious, Clark? He had 13 swings and misses on 35 swings, so that's a 37% whiff percentage. Through 85 pitches, 40 of them were cutters, 22 were knuckle curves. Through 14 sinkers and 9 sweepers, so about 7 out of every 10 pitches was either a cutter or a curveball. No four-seam fastballs in there. I think he needs a change-up, something off-speed that kind of tails away from lefties or can tie up a righty. But overall, I thought it was a solid performance despite the walks because he pitched out of some jams. But, uh, yeah, tell me in the comments and in the chat what you think about Clark Schmidt today. Uh, it looked like he was getting some ugly swings there. That breaking ball down and in was nasty. Uh, he, he was elevating the cutter. That one was 90. Uh, he would get 92, 93 miles an hour with it. So very, very nice job. And that's all I had to say about that. So on the offensive side of things, the Yankees had a ton of men on base today. As you can see, they only scored three runs. So they probably should have done more damage than they ended up doing. Uh, they got their first run on a bases-loaded double play from Trent Grisham. Not, out, not ideal, but you'll take it to get the lead. Loaded the bases a few times in this game. Aaron Judge and Glaber Torres both had better at bats. Torres hit a bullet line drive. Best hit we've seen from him in a couple of weeks in terms of you know, pulling his hands in and coming to an inside pitch and getting the barrel on it. I feel like he's been getting tied up a little bit or he's diving at those outside pitches. But uh, he went one for four, did make an error, left a small village on the bases, but I saw some good swings. Uh, Judge, couple of hits, two for five with a double. Volpe got robbed of a potential extra base hit in the fifth and then robbed later on in the game uh, of a base hit through the right side. So his average is dropping, but you know, continuing to have good swings, continuing to fight each at bat, he was never going to hit 425 for this season. Uh, he's down to 340. You'll take 340. Uh, but I, you know, he could have easily had two hits today is the point I'm making. Uh, top six, Oswaldo Cabrera continues to stay hot. And there should be a graphic coming up any second now. No? No? Something something wrong with my graphic. Anyway, Oswaldo had a uh, two-run home run. Yeah, hang on a second. Yep, it's not working. But Oswaldo, two-run home run. Um, I'm not sure why the graphic's not working. It'll I, I probably got I probably messed up something. But uh, 353 feet, first row, first row, not too bad. You'll t you'll take it. You'll take a fence scraper. And uh, Verdugo had a couple of hits today. You know, Guardians got a couple of runs on the Glaber Torres error. It was a double play ball. He tried to take it himself. They made a case that maybe he could have flipped it to Volpe, but uh, Volpe was kind of close, so it made sense to take it himself. But then he kind of threw off balance, threw it away, and two runs scored. We spend $250 billion a year on defense. Ian Hamilton pitched into and out of trouble in the seventh inning. Clay Holmes came in for the ninth inning, immediately served up a double, got a strikeout, and then an interesting matchup. Estevan Floreal came in to hit with a chance to beat the Yankees. Wouldn't that have been something if they uh, if Estevan Floreal walked him off? But uh, he got him swing, or he got him looking on an inside slider just off the plate. I thought Holmes got the call. It sounded like uh, Jeff Nelson thought that Holmes got the call also. Uh, and then he got a routine ground out to second base to end it, and the Yankees. Win again, and they are 11 and 3. Ball game over. Yankees win. Ball. Yankees win. You're a winner. You'll take it. But, uh, In terms of the belt, I really had two choices today. It was Clark Schmidt or it was Oswaldo Cabrera. Even though we don't have the highlight for Oswaldo Cabrera, I just figured out what's wrong. The, the link is messed up, but I'll fix that, uh, and we'll have it ready for next time. But the belt goes to Mr. Oswaldo. Staying hot. Tommy Higgs says Judge is slowly coming around. Definitely better at bats today for sure. Get to says that 
11 and three feels pretty amazing. I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with you. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the box score, shall we? Because the Yankees did have 10 hits today. Like I said, I feel they should have scored more runs than they got. So 10 hits allowed or 10 hits from the Yankees, five hits allowed to the guardians. Uh, you see Volpe 0 for 4, Soto 0 for 4, multi-hit games from Judge, from Rizzo, from Verdugo, and from Trevino. Trevino had a pop-up that dropped in, so it wasn't like he was scalding the ball, still hitting 143. See, the bullpen did a nice job with four scoreless innings in relief of Clark Schmidt. And uh, Schmidt posting a nice little ERA so far. So you'll take it. You'll take it. All right, take a few more comments. We got another recap coming up later today, so I might end this one a little bit. Uh, Ian Rodriguez says seven on the road, seven and one on the road feels even better. Absolutely, hey. Doctor Anarchy says Wizard of Oswaldo keeping the hot streak alive. He is definitely on fire right now, and I don't know what's what he's changed. I don't know what's different. I've looked at his. Uh, his hitting, his uh, his stance, I, whatever it is, I'm not seeing it. Maybe it's what he's having for breakfast. Maybe he switched from Wheaties to Cheerios. I don't know. But whatever he's doing, it's got to, you know, he's got to keep doing it. Um, he's been following around uh, Juan Soto, uh, watching all of his batting practice sessions. I think that's got to help some. He's been um, having good at bats. He's been taking pitches. He's not swinging out of his shoes all the time he's taking the ball the opposite way when the pitch warrants that. So I'm just very impressed with what Oswaldo Cabrera is doing so far. Uh, Ghetto says, we've only lost three games all year. If that don't make you feel good, nothing will. Uh, John Blom says, Floreal is the DH, LOL, ha, 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 he, he, he. Um, yeah, Floreal hitting uh, 118 right now he's never going to be a, a big time hitter in the major leagues he's just got too many holes in his swing uh dante Ferletti says grisham done once the martian returns from orbit you know it'll be interesting to see what happens there because he is a really good defender but we're gonna have too many outfielders i think he might be the guy to go but then again you know maybe they hang on to him and verdugo goes uh Verdugo I think has been playing pretty well lately he had a couple of doubles today he's raised his average up to 229 it really depends on whether or not the Yankees need something because if Verdugo's not going to be playing every day if he's coming out of the lineup right and you've got the Martian in center you've got Judge or Soto in left and and the other one in right and then you got Stanton at DH well you know that that leaves you know you have to choose between who's going to be your fourth outfielder whether it's going to be Grisham or whether it's going to be Verdugo. Now, will Verdugo play well when he hasn't been playing every day? Uh, and, you know, Grisham's really there for his defense. You know, he's not in there for his offense. There is an opportunity, I think, to flip some somebody uh, in a trade, you know, at the deadline or, or when the Martian comes back. That's assuming everybody's healthy, you know? I think you could probably get something for Verdugo if he's playing well, but if he's playing well, why would you want to deal him? It's just an interesting question. That's why I think if everybody's playing well, you might see Dominguez go back down to AAA for a while. He's still pretty young. He didn't have much time at AAA. I don't think the Yankees would be opposed to giving him a few extra weeks, and then when somebody needs, like, you know, somebody has a pulled hamstring or whatever, then you go to the Martian. Or if not, you know, he stays and he gets a year in AAA and then comes up in September again. You know, let's not forget, when you're coming back from Tommy John surgery, especially the early stages of your comeback, the uh, power isn't always there. You know, last year, Bryce Harper took him a couple of months to get, you know, he came back early to get that power stroke going. And Dominguez is a guy with some power. And once again, he's, you know, he hasn't faced a lot of AAA hitter, uh, pitchers. He hasn't faced a lot of major league pitchers. Like, do we really expect him to step in there and be great all of a sudden? I think he's going to be great, but I think he might need a little bit of time you know, after coming back and totally rehabbing to get back in the groove, you know, let him, let him play a month at triple a, if everybody's healthy, you know, and then trade deadline comes around, you know, it's the end of July. Let's say Dominguez is playing well at triple a. He's healthy. He's hitting for power again, looking good from both sides of the plate. He's in shape. And then you've got Verdugo playing well, playing like Verdugo. 
You've got Grisham, hopefully, uh, you know, at least carrying his weight as a defensive replacement. Soto's obviously not going anywhere. Judge not going anywhere. Stanton probably not going anywhere. Then you make the decision. Who can I get the most for? My hunch is you probably get the most for Verdugo. And I have no problem replacing Verdugo with the Martian if the Martian is ready. Because, one, the Martian is younger. He's a switch hitter. And he's a homegrown guy. You know? So... I got no no problem. And I think he's got more power than Verdugo, quite frankly. So no need to rush him. Uh, a lot of people in the comments seem to agree. Uh, Dominic Calderon says, all I know is Birdie better get comfortable on the bench. You're a smart motherfucker. That's right. Yeah, Birdie uh, not getting much playing time uh, with Cabrera swinging the bat the way he is. I mean – to get five days off and then come in and hit a home run and you see it right there. Let me go uh, full screen because we couldn't show the um, the highlight, the hype reel like I wanted to. So just to catch you up, a, f- a few weeks ago, or maybe like a, a week and a week or ten days ago, I accidentally deleted like this folder full of stuff. And it ha- I keep finding stuff that was in there. So it's linked dynamically. So when a home run gets hit, I publish it, and then I'm supposed to hit a button and it'll play it. Uh, and... Um, you know, every once in a while, I find out that the button was in that folder. And so Oswaldo Cabrera must have been in that folder. So uh, I've done some reorganizing, but I've lost a few things, and I'm still working to get them back. But anyway, let's go back and watch through the highlights uh, one more time because this was a pretty tight little ball game, you know? Uh, Judge with the pop fly in the first inning. I thought this might carry out of the ballpark when you saw the right fielder start drifting like that. Judge hustles in. This is the cutter right down the middle, but he gets away with it. And then to Ramirez, down and in with a breaking ball. Nasty hook. You see him swing right over the top of it. Just He had some ugly swings like that today, or or he induced some ugly swings like that, Clark Schmidt. Uh, getting the force out there at second. This is Grisham banging into the double play. Boom, 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 boom. Another outside breaking ball. It seems like he starts them above the zone and they drop in. You see he gives up on it and it just drops in there for a strike. Nice pitch. Here he picks off the runner. Going to second base. Nice step off. Good communication by the Yankees right there. 92 cutter. Gets the strikeout. Beautiful replay. I love those behind the catching or behind the catcher replay. And then down and in breaking ball. Hits the dirt. And he got a nasty swing there. And then goes back above the zone. So I thought Schmidt showed some good stuff today. Gets a little tapper to second to get the double play. Big double play right there. It kept his pitch count under control. There's another one in the fifth. So he seemed to get it when he needed to. And here's the home run from Cabrera. You see up above the zone. Tomahawks it into the first row. This guy's pissed off because it hits his hands and bounces away. He'll never have that opportunity again. Home run for Cabrera. 352 feet, 115 feet high off the ground. And then uh, Ferguson pitching pretty well today. Going for the behind the back stab there. Did not get it. Speaking of OJ. Uh, And then um, wild throw from Glaber Torres right there. This was the nice play from Rizzo. Again, getting the out. And the Yankees with a nice job. Schmidt dealing. All right, so uh, go ahead and call into the voicemail, and we'll take some uh, some comments uh, tomorrow morning. We're going to have a voicemail show. We're doing that the morning after every game. Also, go check out the merch, nyyrecaps.shop, and pick up something to support the podcast. We got hats. I'll show you one of the new hats we got. We got these trucker hats with the fun hat logo on there, and it's really not the Yankees logo. It's the fun hat logo. It's got the little microphone instead of, five stars it's got four stars and a microphone so you know we got our own little play on things but uh let's wrap it up now the question becomes how will david poteet pitch tonight the cody poteet cody poteet All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you're new. Sign up on all your favorite audio podcast 
platforms uh, so you never miss a game. Uh, I, I put the recap up about five minutes afterwards. We're going to try and start putting the voicemails on there sometimes too. The problem is I do those little skits in the beginning and they're meant to be funny and they don't always like do well on audio so I might have to trip, trim some of those off. But uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next time.